You're watching my good fiend, Roger Walker, on Slasher Pepper. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Hey guys, Lesh Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today, I am going to be reviewing the second book in the Friday the 13th Black Flame series. This is Friday the 13th Hell Lake. Um, now, this <laughs> was a strange book, I can tell you. So, again, like I did with the Jason X Death Moon book, I will be reading the synopsis from the back. Jason Voorhees, unkillable, unstoppable. Camp Crystal Lake's most infamous son is back. Cap Crystal Lake's son? Isn't it Pamela Voorhees' son? And he's doing what he does best. When serial killer Wayne Sanchez was executed, he was looking forward to meeting his hero, Jason, in hell. When they discover there is a way back up into the real world, Sanchez persuades Jason to go back with him, assembling an army of hell's worst inhabitants along the way. The world will soon be at the mercy of an army of the most terrifying and infamous killers in history of brought back from the dead with Jason at their head full of thrill spills and good old-fashioned slasher man Hell Lake proves that death is not the end of fear. That is the synopsis of Hell Lake. Now, I gotta say, I, um, I enjoyed especially the first part of this book. It's still uh, pretty much, you could pretty much fit it in the movie series. But after a little while, it's it, it gets so bizarre that it... I can't fit it anywhere in the series. It's not the Jason from the movies, really. Um, but in the first half, you could kind of see where it was going. But then later, it just takes another route, I guess. With, especially with Jason's character. And some other characters. Um, now, when I read the synopsis of this book, I got really excited. Because I really liked it. I thought it was different, you know. I thought that that should be a bloody good time, you know. A hell lake of a good time. But, um, you know, it's such a weird book. It opens up with basically Wayne Sanchez uh, being executed and he's excited to meet his hero, Jason Voorhees, in hell. And I love that concept. I really liked it. And, you know, it's it was kind of hard for me to picture what, what Paul A. Woods, his vision of hell was. Uh, what he thought hell looked like. Uh, it's basically like the circular thing, and, and basically like serial killers are on the 13th circle of hell. You know, that's pretty interesting, but I had no idea how I could imagine this. And eventually they just, when they break out of hell, they basically just go through the different circles of hell. Until they finally climb out of Camp Crystal Lake. So that's why it's called Hell Lake, which I thought, I loved that. But I just had a kind of a hard time, you know, picturing what he meant with his description of hell. I I guess it was just kind of like, you know how you have in Dread 3D, you have this building, and there it's it's more of a, this building block, you know, and the drugs dealers are, the drug dealers are on top of like the slow-mo drug and shit. And um, it, I kind of imagine something like that. Also, I really enjoyed all of the killers in there. It felt like, you know, some sort of Pirates of the Caribbean restaurant, you know, when there's just, People just screaming at each other and, and, and killing each other and shit, you know. If, if, if you insult someone, you get killed, you know. <laughs> That's sort of the pirate mentality was going on in hell, which I really liked. They get out of hell. How? I don't know, really. They just kind of climb out there. <laughs> There's not really an explanation for it or something. Uh, but first, Wayne Sanchez actually gets to meet Jason. And Jason finally has a best friend. And that makes him cry. Jason cries in this book. Now, I get where Paul A. Woods was going, but it just doesn't fit in with the movie Jason again, you know? Um, I loved where he was going, but I see this more as an alternative universe, if there was uh, more humanity and emotion in Jason still. Because I like the concept of him crying because he finally has a friend. You know, he always got bullied and never had friends, and now he finally has a friend that makes him you know, cry of happiness. Makes a lot of sense. However, it doesn't make sense because so many other people have tried to be his friend, but they get killed, you know? This one guy tried to give him his machete back. He just wanted his machete back, you know? You know, I'm a good guy here. Here's your machete. He gets stabbed to death. He didn't cry there, did he? So why would he cry here? So that's kind of what bugs me the most about the book. That Jason is so different from the other, other Jasons in the movies and stuff. Also, for some reason... Jason prefers a wielding mask over a hockey mask, which again, he just takes off the hockey mask and puts on a wielding mask. 
It's not like his hockey mask broke or something and he wants to hide his face and a wielding mask is the easiest, quickest accessible thing to hide his ugly face, <laughs> you know? So that's, that's, those sort of things, so those sort of decisions really didn't make sense to me. However, it does have some really great kills. It has some absolutely amazing kills, really gory, really graphic, so that made it a really entertaining book. Um, I did, I was entertained throughout it. Near the end, I, it, it's odd because Wayne Sanchez, in the beginning of the book, is really the protagonist, and I hope to follow him throughout the entire book. But then you get to the Crystal Lake kids, and near the end of the book, it just kind of mostly focuses on the Crystal Lake kids and Jason and some other characters. Now, I don't remember who said this. I think it was Wayne Sanchez, but he said, I am the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's work. And that sounded very familiar to me. Very familiar. I am the devil. And I am here to do the devil's work. That's right. You heard it in the devil's rejects first. So that made me that made me do some research. So over here, it says All Rights Reserved 2005. When did the Devil's Reject come out? 2005. This book was released around November of 2005, and The Devil's Rejects was released in July 2005. So, my theory is that this book is rushed as hell. Because it's too coincidental that a quote like, I'm the devil and I'm here to do the devil's work, that's such... Like, it's, it's identical to the quote in The Devil's Rejects, you know, in this book. So, it can be coincidental, just can be coincidental. I really feel like this book was just rushed and that's why it's so bad because also there are grammar errors in this like there are quite a few grammar errors so it's like Paul A. Woods just wrote this and no one even checked on it he was they're like oh well fuck it let's just make a quick buck and um, put it on the market we don't need to read it it's all good there's one scene and that was just so odd and it really made me made me stop reading and 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 just reconsider my existence in on this on this earth because Jason gets a hunting rifle he's shooting people with hunting rifle okay you know that's fine but Paul A. Woods goes into graphic detail of how he gets shot in the dick. in the fucking and also in his asshole he's screaming in pain and agony <laughs> Oh my god, man. I, it's so odd. It's so odd, man. I also didn't really care for the campers. Like, um, right before they get out of hell, you get to focus on the campers. Which is fine, you know, but the campers aren't really that interesting. And honestly, I, I kind of lost track of the characters. I was like, okay, so this is the goth couple, or were these two the goth couple? You know, it just, there are so many names thrown at you in the beginning of the book that I kind of got confused with that a little bit. I gotta say. However, the kills are pretty cool, that much I can say. It's an odd book. I would say check it out if, you, if you're if you really interested now. Yeah, that's all I can say about Friday the 13th Hell Lake. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Turn the Slash Army today by subscribing. That's all for now. See you guys next time. You're a piece of me.